Warriors, can XRP reach $20? My name is Coach JV. I am the top health and mindset coach in the world. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind will eventually become your words and become your reality. If you can see it in your mind, eventually you can hold it right here in your hand. What you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes an unconscious activity. And now the question that I get all the time is, JV, where's XRP going to go to? Is it going to go to 10? Is it going to go to 20? Is it going to go to 589? Well, I'll tell you what, Warriors. What we're about to talk about today is leadership. Leadership, leadership, leadership. Leadership matters. It does not matter how great your product is. It doesn't matter if you have the fanciest freaking water bottle in the world. It doesn't matter if you have the best gym in the world. It doesn't matter if you have the best warrior academy in the world. The leadership team will make or break the product 100%. It doesn't matter how much uh, your, your product solves. The leadership team matters. Remember the Blockbuster story. It wasn't just because of Netflix. It was because they had a leadership team that did not have the foresight to move forward into the new system. They did not have the working capital. And they didn't have the working capital because their leadership team probably didn't have the foresight. So the reason why I bring that up is because none of us know exactly where XRP is going to go. It's technical analysis, very important in our Warrior Academy. We have a technical analysis team. You have access to my portfolio. You can see my exact exit strategy. We have a discord of people working together, like-minded people in the quantum financial system. You can click the link down below and join. Cryptocurrency call today at 10 o'clock. We have technical analysis call on Friday. We have a team working together in the quantum financial system. We have technical, we have leadership, we have real world solve, and that's really important. So today, what I'm going to take you through is, can it hit $20? Hell yeah, it can hit $20. I think it could hit $100. And who knows where it could go because of the leadership. So I want to give you a different insight into regards how my brain works. Okay, so what I look at methodically is how people react. Their posture, eye contact, their leadership around other CEOs and other people within the industry. And I want you to watch something completely different. Let's take away technical analysis. Let's take away the SEC lawsuit. Let's take away what Ripple even does. I want you to see how Brad Garlinghouse reacts around other top CEOs and leaders. This is the kind of dude I want to run with. The VeChain CEO, that's the kind of dude I want to run with. These CEOs who are stepping up into the game, facing the fire, face to face, chin to chin, not backing down are the type of people I want to run with. These are the type of CEOs that will explode a company in a good way. So let's watch this. Now look for voice inflection. He's sitting here with, I believe, don't, you can uh, question me on this down below, but I think it's the CEO of Swift, but look at the guy's posture. Look at how he speaks. Look at his articulation compared to Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, who, who this is they're talking it's swift ceo and ripple sitting next to each other watch the voice inflection and the leadership in brad garlinghouse and the things that they're saying right next to each other you know a barclays account to an impeza wallet uh, mobile wallet you know th th that when we think about an internet of value it's not just about the banks for sure yes it's about regulated institutions and we're certainly not trying to circumvent those things but you know i, I I think it is, it's fundamentally kind of a, a different view of how the world may play out. Yeah, maybe to that, I mean, a, a big part of the, of the value proposition of Ripple, I think, is the cryptocurrency, the XRP. Um, I think that's another one worthy of debate. Um, there we do find that the banks are also, at least when they talk to us, they tell you different things, they are hesitant to, to convert things into a currency, a cryptocurrency right now because of the, the volatility in the, the currencies, because of the fact that you don't have the deep liquidity that you have in, for example, the dollar as a clearing, uh, as a clearing unit uh, at the end of the now day. Now look how strategic Brad Garlinghouse is. He listens intently what this guy just says about the dollar. Look at his posture. Look at his, his shirt. Look at his cufflinks. Look at, look at him watching and watch what Brad Garlinghouse methodically listening. Okay. Um, so again, when we engage, engage banks, they, we don't find them ready for a model where you convert it. Into Look at him. He's staring him down. He's like, I got you. Crypto and then convert it back. And that has to do with many things, regulation, volatility, and all, all the things that are, that are so that, traded around crypto. But that's a whole story. Boom. He's like, no, 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 no. Look at Brad. Look at this dude slumped down. Brad's like, let's, let's talk. This is, well, it's not really a separate debate because I think there's two important things about this. And Godfrey mentioned this earlier. 
Swift today is a one-way messaging framework. It, it actually isn't a liquidity provider, right? So here's the key to what I'm about to, what I'm talking about. Swift probably doesn't know enough about XRP. He's just leaning back. He's a CEO. He's getting fed notes. Brad Garlinghouse knows Swift like the back of his hand. Watch this. It's Swift messaging partnered with Bank Liquidity. When we think about an internet of value, it's a mixture of two-way messaging frameworks, you know, moving to real-time, a, a chatty protocol, if you will, coupled with real-time liquidity. And it, you know, the, 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 I hear people talk about volatility and I feel like they're propagating misinformation. The, the, the volatility risk of fiat, it, you know, well, volatility is just a mathematical calculation of time times volatility. If you hold fiat for, let's say, an average swift transaction today is in the order of magnitude two days, that's about 180,000 seconds. An XRP transaction is three seconds. Boom. So if you take a low volatile asset times a long duration. Look at her. She's enthralled with him. Fiat or a high volatility asset versus a very, very short amount of time. It turns out mathematically there's less volatility risk in an XRP transaction than there is in a fiat transaction. The difference is you have market makers. When you do a swift transaction, there's banks saying, there's a market maker saying, I'll lock in that rate. I'll take the volatility risk for the next two or three days. With XRP, you don't have to do that because it sells so quickly. Got Boom. You. All right. So we'll just start there. That's one of the leadership moments that I, I, I noticed. And then uh, Digital Asset Investor posted this yesterday. Listen to this. Like he's, um, and I don't know who this dude is. So I apologize, but listen to the leadership. I mean, he's like a lion, man. Watch this. I, this is a type of people I want to run with. Let's watch so this. It's been said that you are one of the biggest Ethereum holders. You, uh, it it has been said. I've heard that. Yes. So look <laughs> at the posture of these guys. Okay, How listen. Do you go about so I'll keep my mouth shut after this. But watch this guy, the, the biggest Ethereum holder. And I think that's Brad. Yeah, when he speaks. Watch this. Managing your treasury within consensus and your own personal one. <laughs> Um, I guess no comment. Um, so uh, we personally, in, in terms of consensus, we are um, a small fraction of the Ethereum asset and all the assets on the Ethereum platform. Uh, and we manage our treasury like a company would manage it. Okay, look at how he's leaning into listening to what he's saying and watch his response. But did you hear what he said? Let's watch this over. Joe, it's been said that you are one of the biggest Ethereum holders. You, uh, it it has said been this. said. I've heard that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Based um, on no data. How do you go about managing your treasury within consensus and your own personal one? <laughs> um, I guess no comment. Um, so uh, we personally, in, in terms of consensus, we are um a small fraction of the ethereum asset and all the assets on the ethereum platform uh and we manage our treasury like a company would manage its treasury i find it interesting that ripple is attacked for being transparent because we are very proactive and maybe put actually the next xrp markets report which will be quarterly will come out sometime into this week but because we share that information, we're attacked for it, yet other platforms don't share that information. And so they are insulated from those same critiques and criticisms. I think in the dictionary, that's called hypocrisy. <laughs> He's right in front of these guys. Like in the dictionary, it's called hypocrisy. Not 100% sure, but it's close. Is there any plan for greater transparency uh, within consensus in terms of how it deploys its um, Ethereum? Internally, sure. Um, and you know we're a private company, and uh, we Rip are a private company too. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I'll just leave it right there. That's leadership, Warriors. That's leadership. He doesn't back down. And let me ask you a question: What CEO is all over CNBC, all over the news stations? The other recent, uh, I guess, data point was China uh, with Bitcoin, and and just overall, let's let's talk regulation. Because you, uh, Ripple is unique in, in certain ways in that uh, you kind of control the amount of XRP that's out there and decide uh, when it can be issued. And and actually, the SEC took issue with that, so to speak, uh, in that it, you might be more like a security than a currency. And that's still pending. So they just talk in general about all regulation and how it might affect yeah. you and Ripple even differently than it would affect Bitcoin. 
Well, I think what you're getting at at the core really is in the United States, there has been a lack of regulatory clarity. This is something I've been talking about even on CNBC for about two plus years. In other countries you have seen in the UK, Japan, Switzerland, Singapore, I mean, these are you know G20 markets where they have invested the time and energy either through legislation or rulemaking to provide that clarity and that certainty. And that allows investors to participate, that allows entrepreneurs to build, that allows people to build companies that make the CNBC disruptor list. So here in the United States, we haven't had that clarity. I think, uh, you know, just to correct something you said, Ripple actually doesn't control XRP. XRP is an open source technology, very analogous to Bitcoin. In contrast, XRP is very efficient in terms of speed of transaction. At the very car- it is a carbon neutral blockchain. So these are all examples of it, of it being more efficient, but all of the XRP that has ever been created has already been created. So it's a zero inflation dynamic. But the core of what you're talking about around regulation, I think- So is- those are key preemptive programming right there, Warriors. So we talked about the zero carbon narrative, no uh, zero inflation, right? And I'm going to talk to my warriors today at 10 o'clock on our, war, our crypto call about hyperinflation. Okay, so the reason why I bring this stuff up, warriors, I know this stuff isn't super exciting, but leadership, leadership, leadership matters. This leadership team is dynamic. So I'm going to uh, show this video to you guys. XRP News today, check him out. He's throwing out some really good content here. Um, he should have more followers, but I want you to listen to what they talk about liquidity because you have to understand the, One of the things that I've said a lot. You have to understand the liquidity crisis. Uh, is that proof of work is kind of a technological dead end. It, it works fine. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying that there hasn't been any significant innovation in it. There are also uh, changes that are in the form of new features. One of the features that I think is, is very exciting is a feature that would allow people to launch, um, well, stable coins are the obvious use case, but it's not just stable coins. It's essentially assets pegged to some external value. Features similar to that exist on other systems. But the interesting thing about this is that the liquidity is guaranteed by the ledger mechanics. Why is liquidity important for market stability in health? Then? I think even to take a step back, liquidity has a lot of components that are important to kind of address. So one of which is um, immediacy. So I think about that as how quickly can I get access to markets and how quickly can I trade into and out of this asset or token uh, for another asset. I think about the breadth of the market. So breadth is sort of how you think about um, the trading volumes at different prices in the order book um, and then depth of the market. And depth of the market is really about how many orders there are close to exactly where the, where the price is currently trading of varying sizes, which would imply that you could get a lot of volume through without having much price movement as you're trading into and out of the asset. And so the key to this warriors is liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. As we go into hyperinflation or a high inflation environment, and we're going into Basel three, the banks are going to need liquidity. Remember the blockbuster story. I'm going to continue to revisit that preemptive programming, the blockbuster story. It wasn't just the fact that Netflix came in. It was the fact that leadership was poor and they didn't have access to capital. If you're in a liquidity crisis, you need to hold gold on on hand, actual physical gold for riskier assets. You're going to start to run into capital problems. And if you run into capital problems as a business, what do you think PPP loans are all about? Okay, so let's go into another thing. So we talked about uh, leadership. They talked about liquidity, but what is the key to RippleNet in regards to how safe they are, right? If you're going to run it on a bank, this is awesome. In May 2020, we've shared this before, McKenzie identified the both consumers enterprise digital adoption and matured for five years in a matter of eight weeks for financial institutions, digital technology, including cloud-based models, offer flexibility and scalability required to meet the demands of digitally advanced societies, okay? So this is really cool. What SO... SOC2 certification means for Ripple Cloud. RippleNet's product suite ensures the highest standard of safety, security, and privacy as a team uh, team statement to this. It has been awkward uh, awarded <laughs> awkward. It has been awarded the sought after system of organization controls to SOC2 certification. The SOT are a set of reports carried out by an independent CPA to uh, certify excellence in security and privacy. SOC2 reports offer valuable information with regard to organization securities capabilities. So you Users can asset, access risk and uh, and be confident in the services performed by the certified provider. This means a financial institution, particularly banks, who typically utilize legacy software, planning to adopt RippleNet Cloud, can do so with confidence that Ripple has certified seal of approval when it comes to meeting modern security and privacy needs. Uh, uh, think about Ripple. Ripple is much safer than Swift. 
in my opinion, right? Swift is, I think it's 16% that they've been hacked. Um, don't quote me on that. All right, so let's head into some more news uh, and we'll get you guys um, on your way for your day. New OCC head doesn't rule anything out in digital assets guidance review. The Office of Comp Control of Currency is reviewing all digital assets guidances issued under the leadership of former acting comp controller Brian Books. The Office of comp, the OCC looking at everything around digital assets guidance issued last year and current had said, the OCC is undertaking a broad review of interpretive guidance, uh, conditional trust charters, and other issues around digital assets, said acting comp controller uh, Michael Hishu in the virtual press conference Wednesday. Now, the reason why I bring this up, Warriors, is you have to you have to really think about this. You got to be careful with these shit coins. You got to be very, very careful. I have a small percentage of my portfolio that is stacked in those coins and I'm pulling profits. I'm already house money. I'm sitting on those. My portfolio, and you can have access to that by clicking the link down below in the um, description with Join the Warrior Academy. My portfolio is fundamental cryptocurrencies that are going to change the world. This is how I research my cryptos. I watch the leadership team. I watch voice inspection. I watch, uh, like, for example, Jerome Powell. It's interesting when he does his speeches, when he was talking about hyperinflation, not hyperinflation, flexible inflation. <clears throat> he kept coughing. Well, the last speech he just did, he, he immediately stopped coughing when he was talking about moving into the new digital age and digital currency. Okay. Also, Google will only take ads from FinCEN registered and chartered crypto exchanges and wallets. Effective August 3rd, anyone seeking to advertise those products to U.S. customers will have to be registered with FinCEN. This is really important, Warriors. Now, the FinCEN um, piece, I think it's if I just click right here. No, nope. um, the FinCEN basically is a, a set of regulations for um, money service businesses, uh, cryptocurrency companies, any type of financial company like that, FinCEN, basically financial technology. Now, think about this. They're giving them to August. So you're going to have all these. The narrative is here, Warriors. All these non-legit exchanges are going to get crushed. All these crappy cryptocurrencies are going to get crushed. So you need to make sure that you're in fundamental cryptocurrencies that are going to change the world, right? You also, and when you're an investor, you never want to invest more than you can afford to lose, right? But if you want to gamble, Warriors, if you want to gamble, just go to the casino. If you want to uh, get rich quick, go to the go to the gas station and buy some lottery tickets and do some scratchers in your car. But if you really want to invest in the new infrastructure and in the quantum financial system and move into the new industrial revolution, which is the fourth industrial revolution, and be part of the banking rails and part of the new economic system that's going to bridge the world together to bring inclusivity, to go to zero carbon, I think it's a great thing. People are going to say it's for nefarious, but if it does go to zero carbon and we're able to connect people all over the world and get the unbanked banks so they can move money out of their country, I think it's a great thing, Warriors. But what I'm doing is I'm going to become the uncommon 1% so I can bring the money back to the people. I follow God. I'm, I follow the life of Jesus. I'm a man of God. I'm non-religious. I accept everybody. But what I have done is I've created a Warrior Academy with 1,900 people worldwide. You have access to my portfolio an exit strategy that you actually can fill out on your own and practice because you have to have an exit strategy you're going to get wrecked like 99 percent of people who are emotional we have a discord with constant communication all the time a technical analysis team we have a team in our private social media network we pull you off of social media into our private network you can ask questions and we have a team monitoring that to ask questions so if you just how do i set up an exchange like simple simple things if you're because this is brand new for a lot of people right to advanced we also have cryptocurrency calls we have one at 10 o'clock today where i'm going over hyperinflation what my warriors should look out for, where the money flow goes. We also have technical analysis calls on Friday. The best part is, you know, I'm a gosh dang warrior. We have a 120 day challenge, mindset, goal setting, vision board creation, um, habit stacking. By the time you're done with the 120 days, you're going to be living the life like I do as a warrior. We also work out with you live daily and nutrition. There's nothing like this fitness, nutrition, and crypto. There's nothing like this program in history. Click the link down below. You have nothing to lose, Warriors. It's 100% money back guarantee. We don't play games with people's money. If there's not a mutual value exchange, you hit our customer service team up, we give you 100% money back guarantee. As we always say, Warriors, rise. We got to get our shit together.